The Plan? April 15, 2020 by Anna Von Reitz. I keep getting people asking me what the plan is. The plan was set forth by our ancestors, and what we are doing now, is recognizing how far afield and misled from the plan we have actually been. Like taking a wrong turn in New Jersey and landing in the Atlantic Ocean, we are coming to grips with the wrong turns that have been insinuated into our government and into our lives. And making correction. Remember that Satan is the father of all lies, all deceits, and this world has indeed been ruled via lies and deceits for generations, so, exposing those lies and deceits and recognizing when and where and by whom we have been deceived in the past becomes a necessary preoccupation. Most of us have been grossly dis-served by public school educations, which have fed us an incomplete, watered-down, deliberately misrepresented version of our history, howbeit, the only version most Americans know. This is done to explain away missing pieces and smooth over issues that would otherwise claim our attention and demand our action. For example, where is the declaration of war from Congress starting the Civil War? There isn't one. Where is the peace treaty ending that horrible conflict? There isn't one. Why is our flag hanging face down in the Capitol Rotunda? Because our military generals are rats. Where did these political parties come from? Europe. What are they, really? Public employee lobbyist organizations. When was the reconstruction finished? It wasn't finished. It was barely begun with it was sidetracked in breach of trust. Why was the state of Florida changed to the state of Florida? Are executive orders constitutional? And so on and on. That one just came over my desk this morning, are executive orders constitutional? They aren't. And they aren't meant to be. Why not? Because executive orders exist outside the realm of the constitutions. Executive orders are directives given within the private purview of the governmental services corporations, they are in-house administrative orders given by the president to the employees of the corporations, and that means both municipal and territorial corporations, since 1937. Executive orders have nothing whatsoever to do with you as an American. They are entirely about directing the actions of federal government employees. So unless you happen to be a federal government employee or dependent, you can stick such orders where the sun don't shine. This is how and why it is possible for the federal government to declare a national emergency related to their corporations and employees that isn't recognized by our actual American government at all. Case in point, they've been shut down for weeks and have declared war on the common cold, while we've plotted along and exposed the criminal meddling and self-interest and destruction caused by bad actors like Bill Gates and Anthony Fauci and the Council on Foreign Relations, and otherwise continued our business as usual. The United States of America unincorporated hasn't declared any national emergency. Despite the inconveniences and monetary losses caused by our federal employees and their boiling cesspool in Washington, D.C., our government and our people are not under any presumption of any state of emergency. And we don't recognize any war powers ever being granted to our federal employees or any federal franchise state of state employees, either, when they are acting in relation to us or standing on our shores. Quite the contrary. Their clear instruction with regard to us is to provide for our mutual defense. As long as they are on our payroll, including pay for exercising our delegated powers, that instruction stands. Federal employees and dependents have never been covered by the constitutions. They have always inhabited a separate and foreign realm. This is what necessitated the entire civil rights struggle. They were trying to get recognition of civil rights equal to the rights everyone else enjoyed. Unfortunately, their acceptance of merely civil rights instead of natural and unalienable rights leads to a circumstance where, for them, the equal guarantees of the constitutions can be suspended and their equal civil rights taken away, just as they were granted, by the members of Congress. So the plan already existed long ago, and what we are doing, is retracing our steps and correcting the wrong turns to get our government fully back on track. Ours is a plan to get back to the plan. It is in those terms that I can answer the question, what's the plan? Here it is. We go back to New Jersey where we took that wrong turn, and we already did all that historical research to form an ironclad knowledge of what went wrong, where, under whose watch, etc., etc., etc. That part is complete to the extent necessary. We are still filling in bits and pieces, but we've got what we need. Here's the rest. 
everyone now has a simple means to declare their birthright political status as an American. Everyone records that choice with their respective state assembly. They can choose to log in as state nationals and have no obligation to the government beyond keeping the peace that is, not harming other people or their property, or, they can sign in as American state citizens and help run their state government. Of course, if they want to remain subjects of the Queen or subjects of the Pope, they can simply stay as they are and be counted as either U.S. citizens or citizens of the United States. Those who choose to act as state citizens will take part in the process of reconstructing an American state of state business organization for their state of the Union. These American states of state organizations are known as Confederate states and they then repopulate the missing portion of the federal government and take charge of the national treasury functions, the mint, the post office, the patent and trademark office, etc. The states are supposed to set the policy and direction and speak the will of the people in their states and are to oversee the business operations and resource decisions of the state of state organizations both at the state level and the federal level. Unlike the practice of the foreign subcontractors our government of, for, and by the people is not always in session. Members have to call it into session or the United States of America unincorporated has to do so, and has done so. Our hired help has attempted to take over our government by depopulating it. Basically, they have misidentified each one of us as one of them, as employees or dependents of the foreign, for-profit governmental services corporations running the territorial and municipal levels of the federal government. Most Americans were never given any disclosure about any of this activity by their erstwhile employees. They were misidentified with malice aforethought almost at birth, so they never had any idea that a false registration had been entered in their name and their parents were never told, either. As a result of this unconscionable contracting practice, millions of Americans have been misidentified as British territorial citizens, as if they were all born in Puerto Rico. And they have been subjected under territorial law and have lost access to the constitutional guarantees they are heir to as a result. Our process restores them to their birthright political status, brings them back under the protections of the constitutions and enables them to restore both their state of state and federal state functions, so that we once again enjoy an American government in America. This is a perfectly legal and lawful process that we are guaranteed under all sorts of treaties and contracts and international accords, and as there is absolutely no advantage to federal citizenship above or beyond being a federal employee, it is to be presumed that, given the facts, most Americans will be loyal to their own country, will want to live as free men and women, will want the right to own and control their own private property, and will want access to the constitutional guarantees. From our position, our trustees, the Pope and the Queen, have collaborated in breach of trust and sought to evade their obligations under their respective constitutions and have played a very insidious game to do so. Now that the fraud and disservice has been discovered we are engaged in taking corrective action, as individual people, as states, and as our unincorporated Federation of States, the United States of America. We are bringing the circumstance forward before all Americans and all the other people and governments and institutions of the world. That's the plan and circumstance that motivates it and here is the action plan. 1. Bring millions of misidentified Americans home to their birthright political status, by educating them and inviting them to declare their political status and record it for posterity. 2. Assemble the properly constituted state governments, which can only be done by people who have declared their birthright political status and who are choosing the act in the capacity of state citizens. 3. Have the state governments known as state assemblies reconstruct the American states of states, a job left hanging since the Civil War. 4. The American states of states join together to repopulate the Confederation of States. 5. The Confederation resumes operations as the missing federal portion of the federal government. 6. Americans are in control of their own government again and the foreign corporation employees are put back in their places. We are simply recognizing the mistakes and deceits of our foreign employees and are correcting them, which doesn't make everyone in the world happy, but will serve to wake up a lot of other sleeping national governments that have been all but overwhelmed by scheming power-hungry globalist elites operating and promoting a system of corporate feudalism under a blueprint provided by the fascist government of Westminster. 
Please consider making a small donation to help support Anna and the Living Law Firm by visiting the American States Assembly.net, scroll to the bottom and click on the Donate Now button. Thank you. If you enjoy having Anna's latest articles made into videos, please consider making a purchase from Ed's website sacredintuitiveelements.com. Thank you.